All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, the February 9th Executive Committee meeting is called to order. First, I would like to ask our interpreters to explain how to access interpretation. Please proceed. Good morning. To use the interpretation feature, please scroll to the bottom of the Zoom screen where the meeting controls are, click on the interpretation icon, the world, and select English as your language. If you are joining through the Zoom mobile app from a cell phone, tablet, etc., please press the ellipsis, then interpretation, and then choose your language. Finally, click on original, mute original audio to not hear the original Spanish flow in the background. Headsets are available for interpretation. If you are in a meeting in the meeting room, please check out a headset from the receptionist in the lobby. Buenos días. Para hacer uso del servicio de interpretación, por favor, la parte de la donde aparecen los controles. Clic en el icono de interpretación, el globo terráqueo y seleccione español. Si está utilizando la aplicación de móvil, móvil de Zoom desde su celular, tableta, etc., presione los puntos suspensivos, luego interpretación y el, luego el idioma. Si no desea escuchar el audio original en inglés en el fondo, por favor seleccione silenciar audio original. Contamos con auriculares disponibles para el servicio de interpretación. Si se encuentra en la sala de la reunión, por favor pedir auriculares a la recepcionista en el vestíbulo. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's begin with a tribal acknowledgement. And that would we will begin by taking a moment to acknowledge the land that we call home. The tribal nations of the San Diego region has historically faced injustices. We acknowledge the harmony that existed between the land, nature, and its original peoples who have since endured displacement, persecution, and systemic oppression. We pay our respect to the unceded territory and homelands of the 18 tribal nations in our region, the most in any county in the United States, from four cultural groups, the Cumie, the Igueño, the Luceño, the Copeño, and the Coahuilla. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for many generations in a relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the Sandag community, we acknowledge this legacy. We aspire to learn from indigenous traditional knowledge and experiences in undoing the injustices of the past. And with that, if you will please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we have quorum, correct? Good morning, Vice Chair. Yes, we have a quorum with five of six jurisdictions present. County of San Diego is absent. All right, thank you so much. All right, before we begin, um, well, we're actually not going to do that because we have a new executive committee member, council member Molina, um, but she has not arrived yet. And we'll say hi to her when she arrives. Um, before we proceed with non-agenda comments, I would like to remind everyone in the room that this meeting will be conducted in an orderly manner to ensure the public has an opportunity to be heard and the members' discussions and deliberations are not disrupted. We want to hear from people who have comments on the subject of today's meeting, but we will insist that comments remain on topic. No comments shall use loud, threatening, profane, or abusive language that disrupts the orderly conduct of the meeting. Any such language or any other disorderly conduct that disrupts, disturbs, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the committee meeting is prohibited. All right. Um, we will allow one minute um, for public comment. Um, and then as a reminder, as always, um, for executive committee, uh, we won't be using voting pads, so just go ahead and, and we will raise your hand um, if, if you'd like to speak. Tessa, let's move to item number one, please. Public comment. Thank you. Um, just a reminder, we take the first five public commenters at this time. That will be Michael Brando, Truth, Corey Schumacher, Sarah Ochoa, and Paul the Bold. The following will be called at the end of the meeting. Phone number 813, the original draw, and Blair B. Michael Brando, please come to the podium. This is the voice of a woman who's interrupting the orderly conduct of not just this meeting, but other meetings, as well as what's going on in San Diego. She actually mocked people. She may have been joking, but the truth often comes out through joking, as we know through, through one of our speakers. Uh, so she said, 
how many of you knew what a county supervisor was before COVID? Be honest. We saved you. Think of the horror that was done to this county. Yeah, you're looking down right when I said that, Sean. The good news is people are becoming aware of all the fake science going on here regarding COVID and regarding climate change. Truth, please come to the podium. All right, this is the bringer of mild accusations, Truth. Jack DeVishu, who is not here, I heard a rumor from Mark that he's actually belongs to a small group of freaks. I'm curious if that's true. But this is a true story. This week, I ran into someone who works for Sandag under Janet Yeh. I told them Sandag needs to be eliminated. Just kidding, but I saw them in the elevator. What do you know? This board needs audit code 3.1.12 that can remove someone for, quote, incompetence, dishonesty, and unethical behavior, end quote. That's all a lot of problems. Even this podium being in a corner where I can't see. Oh, well, I can kind of see my reps today because it's not blocked usually, but it's also unethical. And Zito also not here. What a shame. I like that he's human, but he needs to understand that calling a lie a lie is essential in this business. I got two hands worth of experiences of people legitimately verbally attacking me, and no one was there to put a hand on my shoulder. No person stood up for me. No mayor spoke up on civility's behalf. And one council president even called me hate-filled names. I even got a media outlet following me to some meetings. Yet I've never asked for help. I just survived, thrived, and grew to get to this point today of no fear. And Hoiberg, Your time expired. Our next commenter, Corey Schumacher, please come to the podium. Good morning. My name is Corey Schumacher. I'm the political director of IBW 569, uh, but I am here this morning in my personal capacity just to give thanks to this intentional community of folks, um, whether it's the public, mm. staff, or the executive board here doing the work of the people just simply here to say thank you so very much. It's hard work, especially when there are downpours happening in each one of our cities and throughout the county. And so um, just happy to be here and uh, knowing that you're responsible for the good work that we're doing together. So thank you very much. Our next commenter, Sarah Ochoa, please come to the podium. Good morning all, my name is Sarah Ochoa and I'm a Chula Vista resident. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who in your elected capacities have been providing so much um, needed support for community members impacted by the recent flooding. Um, learning more about it in some of my communities and my circles that I engage with. And there's so much devastation and a lot of um, folks who have been most impacted are feeling extra traumatized because it's the most underserved communities that are the most impacted. And I know that you all will be leaning on every resource that you have to provide ongoing relief for those folks in the weeks and months and potentially years ahead. And I urge you to continue to do so um, and to make sure that nothing like this ever happens in San Diego County again. Thank you. Our final non-agenda public comment, Paul the Bold, please go ahead. Corey Schumacher is full of shit. Um, uh, call it a hundred year flood, a thousand year flood, whatever. The sad truth is that it happens when Mother Nature says, usually every five years ago. The sadder truth is that the county is not prepared. The county would rather spend money in other places. Road contracts with an exorbitant 20% contingency fee, flashy buildings, tattoo parlors. Sandag would rather spend its money on taco filled workshops, building highways that flood, pushing its tax plans and other things than shoring up the infrastructure. Get a grip. Then when Sendag does work with the infrastructure of all that deferred maintenance, plus current, plus fixing what was destroyed, houses, living free, and so on, will cost more. And then Sendag will be an even less wealthy agency. And for agenda items... When your time expired, that concludes the non-agenda public comments at this time. All right. Um, thank you, Tessa. Let's move to agenda item number two, our consent agenda. Um, do we have public comment? Oh, sorry. Uh, do we have any non-agenda member comments? 
Here, hearing none, we'll go to item two, our consent agenda. Do we have public comments on the consent, consent agenda, Tessa? Thank you, Vice Chair. I have four virtual commenters and one in person. Truth, please come to the podium. All right, the minutes are one of my favorite things to read in a meeting agenda. I love to see how what I said is recorded, if at all, and it is not here, that's wrong. The minute should absolutely note when the chair illegitimately interrupts speakers and breaks the sacred guidelines by not pausing a speaker's time like the rules demand. And another violation that I feel requires noting as a member comment in the minutes is when the chair has a back and forth with the speaker because that's also not allowed under the guidelines and the rules that everybody's figured out are only followed whenever somebody feels like it. Stay on track, Nora, is what I'm trying to say. Also, grammatically, a comma is not required or called for after the year when noting a date. And the minutes need to show if a speaker was in favor or in opposition to each item. If we check one of those boxes on the slip, it needs to be recorded. Otherwise, why am I checking it? I'd also like to see how long each board member's comments were. We can do a comparison. And I want to second Mary Davis's idea about a conflict of interest financial disclosure on the speaker slips so we can get a little closer to real transparency at these meetings. Until then, I remain offended. Thank you for letting me take up a minute to talk about the minutes. Our next commenter, the original draw, will be followed by Paul the Bold, then Blair B, then phone number 813. The original draw, please go ahead. Yeah, I don't know why you guys aren't um, actually recording minutes. You're just writing names as if just with like an attendance sheet. Um, it makes no sense because there's no record of anything except for that. Um, but you're talking about budget and strategic framework. Everything that you're doing, even with the legislative status report, which we're going to hear another one, it's good. Um, it's just all talking about our demise. And, um, you know, it's been really good with these storms, right? You guys got a lot of land to grab. It's good. There's a lot of things you can do from all the destruction that you allowed to happen. So this is good for our, you know, the 15 minute cities and all that and enslavement. I mean, it really pushes the needle forward. That's why, why would we want to acknowledge weather modification? Because how stupid would that be? This is all about climate change, right? The climate is changing so much. It's crazy. We have to save the planet. So this is good that we just let the city and county get destroyed so we can get there faster. Right. Oh, you guys are so good. Your, your green stars today, all around. Kudos. Your time expired. Our next commenter, Paul the Bold, please go ahead. Sandag is straying too far from its mission of transportation planning. Examples, goal number 29. San Diego's transit system is not well integrated in the rest of the state. Maintenance issues, such as realigning the Los Angeles corridor to avoid delays or blockage, or flood-proofing our roads, are impeding progress and causing ripple effects in the economy from delayed shipment, passenger dissatisfaction, and having to constantly shore up the bluffs. We must also be careful with the statistics put out by agencies such as CARB, with its limited monitoring and emphasis on decarbonization at the expense of genuine environmental cleanup. Goal number 30, alternative strategies means thinking outside the box rather being laser focused on specific goals like the Purple Line or transit hubs in West County only or one specific train route. Sendag needs better coordination. Your time expired. I'd like to remind the public that we are on item number two, meeting minutes from the January 12th meeting. Blair B, please go ahead. You'll be followed by the final commenter, phone number 813. Hi, uh, Blair B. Quinn. Thanks for the meeting today. Um, to speak to the uh, uh, approval of meeting minutes, uh, uh, the important item was the uh, uh, working of the uh, FY25 budget. Uh, just to thank you, I think Sandag does an interesting job in uh, offering public meetings to talk about their uh, uh, items coming up in the next years and the next few years. Uh, that's an interesting way to work, I think. Thank you for doing that. It gives the public uh, a heads up how to be considering issues, and it's, it's, it's a neat way to work. Uh, good luck on working on ride share issues as an important part of FY25 budget. Uh, you're, you're finding compromise. Uh, you know, going back to original plans, let's hope we can grow 
from going back to original ideals and uh, good basics in ride sharing. And to conclude, uh, uh, about the minutes process itself, it seems to me you guys copy uh, uh, Robert's rules things. I think we need to be uh, considering a more public system for meeting minutes process for public comment to be heard. Thank you, your time expired. Our final commenter, phone number 813, please go ahead. Uh, amen to everything that Blair said. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, oh, thank you for reminding us what we have to talk on. Um, I wanted to point out that people that are, that were affected by the floods, I mean, not only are they being lied to by our local politicians, like the chair herself, but um, they're also being denied to stay in a safe place where it's cheaper because the city, Sean, is having them go to places that are unsafe, that are more expensive. It doesn't make sense. But hey, as I reminded one of these people who were affected, that's government. And now guess what? She's paying attention and the people who she's surrounded with are paying attention. They didn't even know you guys existed. They didn't even know who the heck you are. But guess what? I'm so happy they know now. And it's just only going to spread. And uh, Corey Schumacher, whatever the hell your name is, you are so full of crap. Your time expired. That concludes the public comments on item two. All right. Um, thank you, Tessa. Do we have any comments on the consent agenda? I'd move approval. All right. We've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We've got a second. I see no additional requests to speak to the consent agenda. Tessa, oh, we'll just, Tessa, you want to call the roll? Thank you. On item number two, City of San Diego, Vice Chair Elo Rivera. Present. Or, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And East County, Mayor Vasquez. Yes. North County Coastal, Vice Chair Hebner. Yes. North County Inland, Mayor Jones. Yes. South County, Council Member Molina. Yes. And for the record, the County of San Diego is now present, Chairwoman Vargas. Mm -hmm. And that motion carries unanimously. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, moving on to item number three for the proposed 2024 legislative program. We are pleased to have our federal advocate, Peter Pacer, here in person with us today. Hello. So I'm gonna turn it over to Colleen. Thank you, Chairwoman. So um, what we're bringing forward to you today is the proposed 2024 legislative program. It's very similar to what the board approved last year with a few modifications. The modifications that are proposed really are aligned with um, what's happening at the state level in terms of how planning agencies meet our requirements for a sustainable community strategy. I know that's very technical, but there are pieces there that we wanna make sure we're advocating for the region. There are other things that we made adjustments to just based on the work plan that you all have adopted for us. So we're gonna be um, sharing with you that legislative program, and then you'll hear both from our um, federal uh, advocate, Peter Pizer, and then what's happening at the state level from our staff here as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Hannah to help lead us through this. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chairwoman, Vice Chair, Second Vice Chair, and members of the Executive Committee. Like Colleen said, my name is Hannah Stern. I'm the Government Affairs Manager here at SANDAG. Today we have Peter Pizer with us from Pizer Associates and also Jose Alvarez, who's our Senior State uh, Legislative Analyst. So with that, I'll turn it over to Peter for the federal report. Morning, everybody. Madam Chair. Mr. Vice Chair, Madam Second Vice Chair, and members of the Executive Committee, it's good to see you. It's good to be back in San Diego. Um, for those of you I have not met in person yet, uh, I, I've been representing SANDAG since 2005, back in Washington, D.C., um, and um, always happy to be here, particularly this week. Uh, giving me an opportunity to get out of Washington uh, is really appreciated, given what's going on back there, which I'll touch on in a moment. Um, but I do think that um, this is a particularly important time um, to be having uh, this legislative program here. And, and I'm glad to be giving you this update at the early stages of a, of a very, what'll be a very busy year in Washington uh, for SANDAG. 
Um, so to start, uh, you you read in the paper every day uh, about the dysfunction going on on Capitol Hill. Um, it is a very difficult time uh, to get virtually anything done. Uh, and you see that playing out in the Senate this week and in the House. Um, and uh, it's um, the issues at play at the moment are are not necessarily directly related to our issues here on behalf of Sandag. As you know, they're talking about a supplemental aid package for uh, Ukraine, Israel, and other foreign um, foreign governments and organizations that has been tied to border security issues. It's become very difficult to get that done. Um, and it looks like that package is not going to move. And now they're looking at separate aid packages um, for Ukraine, Israel, potentially combined. Um, and all of that is sort of stirring the pot uh, of dysfunction, if you will. Um, and it will potentially spill over into the more mundane work of annual spending bills. And as you've seen uh, in the last several months, the Congress has been unable to enact spending bills for the fiscal year that started four and a half months ago. Um, and we're operating on what they call a continuing resolution, which just sort of keeps the government open, but without changing funding levels or any policy from the previous year. Um, the transportation appropriation bill, which is the one we focus on most for Sandag, uh, currently um, needs to be enacted by March 1st. Uh, in order to uh, prevent a lapse in uh, funding and a partial government shutdown. Um, it's anybody's guess whether they'll be able to get that done in the next few weeks. Um, they are working towards that, but this entire atmosphere right now makes this process very difficult. So we're tracking that closely, uh, and all of the transportation programs that we work on are affected to some degree uh, by that. Um, and uh, so we'll be, you know, tracking that closely in cooperation with Sandag staff and working with our congressional delegation. Aside from the congressional funding side, there are a lot of federal grant programs that are operating and continuing to operate uh, thanks to the infrastructure law that passed in November of 21. Um, we have a number of grant opportunities coming up on railroad related issues. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and and others that cover a variety of transportation needs. And so that is ongoing activity that will be going on this year, and we'll be working with the Sandag grants team and the government relations team to uh, develop applications for these programs. Um, I want to talk particularly today about two projects that have been absorbing a lot of our time and interest in, in recent months. Um, first, Otay Mesa East. Um, we are in the process of working towards a, a, an agreement with the General Services Administration, Customs and Border Protection, to lock in a federal partnership around this project. Um, there's been some progress on that in the past year. Uh, the, the, as, you, as you've been briefed on before, the facility at the border is now under design. Uh, we are looking for a, agreement with the federal government that will allow us to continue the design process and actually move to construction with an assurance that we have a federal partner over the long term. Um, this requires uh, an agreement where both Sandag and Caltrans on the sponsor side and the federal government on the the federal on their side are sharing risk. Um, and the key is to balance all of that so that there's no undue risk on the Sandag and Caltrans side of the table. Um, uh, Colleen will be in town next week and Hannah and Victoria and others to uh, meet with our congressional delegation and Customs and Border Protection and GSA to try to advance this process. Um, so that's a major goal for uh, the next few months. Um, we've got very strong engagement from our congressional delegation and support for this on a bipartisan basis. Uh, and uh, that's very helpful to us as we go forward. The other issue I want to talk about briefly is the Low Sand Corridor. Uh, always a hot topic, particularly uh, at the moment when it's closed. 
um, thankfully not because of something going on in San Diego County, uh, but um, for the future, this is a major issue that we're addressing uh, with a with the hope of a significant federal partnership. There are very significant federal funding resources available for this uh, for the realignment project. Um, and we are working with a very supportive congressional delegation again to advance um, you know, the opportunities. We're gonna have grant applications coming up this year around that project to advance the planning. Um, and we're also looking to uh, move individual pieces. And you saw recently the San Diego uh, project, San Diego Bridge got a very significant grant from the federal government that's a partnership between North County Transit District and Sandag to advance that. We're very pleased about that uh, because that w is work that needs to get done um, in the immediate future. But long term, the realignment project um, certainly is a, is a candidate for significant federal funding, and we have uh, we're advancing the environmental process on that and hopefully kicking that off. I think it's very important to say that. In the environmental process, there is very significant opportunity and, in fact, a requirement for input from the community uh, into the various options that are considered in the NEPA process. So as that process goes on, the engagement with the public continues and with the community so that what is cleared environmentally uh, is not just environmentally sound, but also has, you know, support. Uh, and, and takes into account community uh, issues that come up in, in the midst of that process. So I think I'll leave it there. And um, thanks for the opportunity to be here. And, and I think it, we'll have time for questions at the end. Thank you, Mr. Peiser. Uh, good morning, Chairwoman and Executive Committee members. I'll be providing you a brief state uh, legislative update. Uh, as you all know, on January 10th, the governor kicked off the state's annual budget process by releasing his FY 2024-25 uh, proposed budget. Uh, a finishing note, uh, it's important to remark that there is a significant discrepancy between the governor's predicted shortfall of $38 $30 billion and the legislative analyst offices uh, projected uh, $68 billion deficit. Uh, According to the governor, the difference uh, in the estimates boils down to Prop 98 savings, workload reductions, new revenues accounted for, and less pessimism, in his words, about the near future. In order to close the deficit, the governor has proposed a $13 billion draw from the state's reserve accounts, and the rest of the budget will be balanced uh, by an $8.5 billion reduction, $8.5 billion in reductions, uh, $5.7 billion in internal borrowing, $3.4 billion in fund ships, and $2 billion in budget deferrals. Uh, the governor, however, uh, governor's proposal also maintains $18.4 billion in budgetary reserves. Of particular interest to SANDAG, uh, the governor has proposed uh, the following cuts to uh, these important programs. The proposal includes a $200 million reduction to the active transportation program, leaving it with $850 million of the original $1 billion uh, uh, allocated to the program in recent one-time transportation investments. To ensure that no uh, impacts uh, to previously awarded projects, $200 million of the program funding that was expected to be available for allocation in future cycles will instead be used to backfill projects awarded in cycle six of the program, which is the most recent cycle. Of uh, great additional concern to SANDAG, the January budget also includes a $300 million reversion to the Regional Early Action Planning Grant uh, administered by the Department of Housing and Community Development. This funding is critical for SANDAG to carry out uh, our housing acceleration program work to prioritize land use planning activities that accelerate housing development in the region. The government affairs team will be sending a letter to uh, leaders of the assembly and the Senate to um, oppose uh, some of these important budget reversions. Um, and uh, we'll work with the legislature to see what uh, any possible outcomes may be to these uh, proposals in the May revise 
Um, and as a reminder, the final budget must be passed by the legislature by June 15. Uh, I wanted also to highlight that our planning director, Antoinette Meyer, participated in a panel this Tuesday alongside uh, ACD uh, director, uh, uh, Director Velasquez. Uh, and uh, the conversation revolved around REAP uh, funds, how these funds uh, benefit our local regions and the importance of maintaining these funds for uh, useful um, land use planning. Uh, additionally, next Tuesday, we'll be in Sacramento with our deputy CEO, Ray Major. Uh, we're participating in a panel um, and we'll discuss, be discussing some of these uh, important budget cuts. Thank you for your time. And, uh, I think we'll move on with Hannah to our legislative program. Thank you, Jose. Next, we are bringing to you our proposed 2024 legislative platform, which you can see on page eight of your agenda packet. As you can see, there are not any substantive changes under the support section as we continue to focus on delivering our major infrastructure projects. We did add two items to the monitor section. The first, number 29, relates to the increasingly stringent requirements the state is putting on MPOs and their planning documents like the regional plan. We expect these requirements will continue to evolve, so we ask to add this provision to our legislative platform so we can monitor the impact of these changing requirements to SANDAG. The second one, number 30, relates to the growing move towards increasing efficiencies in transportation agencies as agencies cope with less funding and higher costs. For the moment, we are mainly seeing these moves towards shifting coordination in the Bay Area. We recommend adding this provision to the monitor category. The executive committee is asked to recommend that the board of directors approve the proposed 2024 legislative platform, and we're happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, before I turn to my colleagues, I wanted to find out, so how much of this information do we share with um, our local delegation in terms of making sure that their team members know both on the local level and the state level? Because I, I think that there might not be uh, a lot of understanding sometimes about the impact of some of the regulatory, legislative, and then local initiatives and, you know, combining all, all of them. Thank you I don't for know the if question. We do briefings or what do we do? Yeah, um, once the platform is approved by the Board of Directors, um, we do brief our local stakeholders. We routinely meet with other agencies like the Port of San Diego, San Diego Housing Commission, discuss our respective platforms, and we use it to guide our conversations with our state and federal electeds. And so when we um, seek you know, sponsorship of bills or support federal legislation, we use the legislative platform as a guide for those actions. Sure. Uh, do, do public comment, comment yet? Oh, yeah, do sorry. Public, let's go ahead and do public comment first. I need a clarification, sorry. Thank you. Our first public commenter on this item, Michael Brando, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by Truth. Pauline started this item by talking about she's interested in sustainable communities. You don't know the definition of sustainability except as it applies to Agenda 21. That means you're no better than Hassan Ikarada, and now Nora's talking to you. Uh, Nora has multiple conflicts of interest. She was appointed to the California Air Resources Board at one point by Gavin Newsom. So she has multiple conflicts of interest. How interesting is that? sitting on all these boards. Okay, number two, you people over here say you're for smart growth. I talked to you last time about the technocratic agenda through Agenda 21. Smart means sustainability, measuring, assessing, rating, tracking. Sean's laughing, giggling over there in the schadenfreude type of way, mocking us again. People know about this. By the way, related to this, Rosa Corey's book, Behind the Green Mask, it's actually re-released, $20 on Amazon. Read it. Truth, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by the final four virtual commenters. All right, I'm so glad the programs have numbers. So I can refer to them every time Nora becomes an interruption instigator this time. But Colleen, make sure you slip her a copy of the letter too. So two, the term smart growth is derived from the United Nations Agenda 21 control plan. Three, what are the technical tools that SANDAG will use to implement the regional plan? Four, there's a California Baja, California border master plan that nobody in America or Mexico got a say in. 
Seven, supports an unsustainable welfare public transit system. Eight, supports self-driving cars, which have already been found in studies to kill dummies, even at slow speeds. And the claim is job creation. What job when there's not even a driver? Twelve, supports toxic broadband in order to electronically control the entire roadway system. Sixteen, I support opposing not only unfunded mandates, but all mandates. Twenty-five, sounds like the city of San Diego may use San Diego to fund their criminal negligence of their storm channels and pump stations. And in the legislative letter that Nora doesn't read, there's $150 million to literally turn highways into walkways. And see, Nora, this presentation refers to giving trillions to Ukraine and Israel while leaving our country's southern border open to illegal immigration. Just like I said, I will well, Your right. time expired. Our next commenter, Mary D., you'll be followed by phone number 813. Mary D., please go ahead. Hi. Item two, funding mechanisms. No to any new taxes or bonds. You are bad stewards of the money you do get from us. Hands off our wallets. Item three, expansion of technical pools. This is highly ambiguous. Residents deserve to know what technology is coming our way and what the full capabilities are. From speed limiters, now euphemistically called speed governors, to geofencing capabilities, no to tech that can track us or fence us in. We are human beings, not commodities to be managed. Item eight, more technology. No to tracking, taxing, and over-surveilling us. Item 12, equity. As we saw with the flooding in South Creston Mountain View, what passes for equity for many of you is actually lip service only. Focus on the basics and meeting the real needs of residents, not more progress progressive puffery where you fail to meet even the most basic duties to your constituents. And Paul was right about over-governing over and overreach. Transnet tax. And your time expired. Our next commenter, phone number 813, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, Peter Pazer, Pied Piper. You were talking about land use planning for the upcoming land grab by government of the people's property. And uh, Nora, you need a lot more than clarification, sister. You need some morals and you need some vergüenza. I'll be there in a little bit. See ya. Our next commenter, Blair B, will be followed by the final comment to the original draw. Blair, please go ahead. Hi, uh, Blair Beekman. Thanks for this item. I always like to hear uh, federal reports here at the local level. Thank you. Um, uh, not just uh, the city of San Diego, but National City, Chula Vista, other cities had real serious problems from the recent flooding issues. So uh, if it's possible to talk about how uh, disaster federal funding dollars can, can, can be arriving in San Diego uh, area. And, uh, you know, uh, Sandag people did a great job to ask, you know, to, for accountability in the reporting of uh, what happened during that time. If we have, we have to really be sure to create a good uh, sense of accountability for ourselves and really talk about a future decision-making that uh, we don't harm people. That's the way we talk about our future federal funding dollars. Uh, I hope you can talk about it in some way today. Thank you. Our final commenter, the original draw, please go ahead. It's a little concerning about these 15 minute cities. I feel like all of the deficit in the state is really going to affect putting people in enslavement. So we need to figure something out. Um, and these, but good thing with these autonomous cars, right? Because they're driving people just like into other things. So it's a really good way to get rid of people and depopulate, especially if the kill switch is on there, right? And like the governor, because it could really mess with that autonomous part. Like it really just wants to go drive into like a wall and maybe it'll just like the kill switch will go and the person will just fly out of the windshield. So that would be a really good way to get rid of people. Um, and, you know, I'm just thinking it's like, you know, with this use of eminent domain that you want to limit the use, I mean, what, this storm is a really good opportunity to go grab a bunch of land. Um, I'm pretty sure people are already doing it, but I mean, we need to take advantage of every opportunity and like destruction um, and disaster that happens because we got to really enslave these people. And so this is really good that, you know, all this is going on because it's getting us there quicker, but it's just the money that's the problem. So we need to figure something out there. Your time expired. That it concludes the public comments on item three. Thank you. Uh, first, Vice Chair. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks for all the work on this, Hannah, Peter, and Jose. Um, I won't take too long here. I, I'll move approval if I, with one um, recommended addition if the committee is up for it, and that would be adding a number 24 to support. Um, this is very specific to the moment, but very important nonetheless, and that would be um, support funding to aid public and private efforts to recover from the January flood disaster, including uh, infrastructure and housing. Um, I've said it before, and I'll continue to, to beat the drum about this. What happened on January 22nd was a, a honest to God disaster here in, in San Diego. And there is a crisis that did not go away when the waters receded. It's going to take a long time to rebuild. And to the extent that our region can co collaboratively and collectively advocate for all the resources that folks are going to need to pick up the pieces, um, that would be incredibly helpful. So um, that concludes my motion. Thank you. Thank you. And I would definitely be supportive of that. I think that's an excellent idea. And as um, you and I were talking earlier, private insurance, if you had it, doesn't even cover this because it's an act of God. So public dollars are really needed to make sure that these folks are in better shape and can live in their homes. But I wanted to also comment on item number 23 under support, which is what we added last year, which was um, lead efforts to pursue legislative and or administrative reform of the regional housing needs assessment process and state housing element law. I appreciate that we, um, the chair has reached out to director Gustavo Velasquez from um, housing and community development, and he will be here on March 22nd for the board, the full board meeting to take our comments. I'm especially grateful because as many of you know that um, HCD has embarked on a supposed reform of RENA effort, yet they did not include local government at all in those conversations in their stakeholder group. So that they're coming here is very important and I appreciate that much, that very much so prepare your remarks, all right? Um, and then finally, I, 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 if we could do anything to speak to the governor about not cutting uh, the couple of billion dollars from housing and homelessness. <laughs> There's uh, clearly a big need for both of these things. We're receiving mandates to do things, and most of us don't have, most of our cities do not have the funding to be able to subsidize these projects. In my own city, it would cost a half a billion dollars for us to be able to build them. We have two million in our housing fund, so small cities are especially affected, but I think everybody is, nobody has the money that it will take for us to actually achieve the housing needs that we have and to have the governor make, you know, say that it's a priority, but then cut the funding for it is very disappointing. So I appreciate that advocacy on all of our behalf. Thank you. Uh, motion, Molina. Thank you, Chair Vargas. Thank you very much. I am in favor of the proposed 2024 legislative program. My question has to do, Mr. Pazer, your introduction spoke to the state deficit uh, projected for the 2024 or the 2025 state budget. And I wanted to ask briefly, are we going to know ahead of the June adoption if the deficit is closer to the 38 billion or closer to the 68 billion? No, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. So by uh, June, um, it is expected that DOF uh, will have better projections on the actual deficit uh, of the budget. Uh, the Governor's estimate of a $38 billion deficit, um, uh, it's just based on initial revenue projections, but there will be a clear picture by June once the budget is adopted. Yeah, I also think it's really important that, I, I think it's really important that now that we have the agenda and our priorities and specifically to the state and some of the advocacy, it's also us advocating for our cities and then individually on behalf of SANDAG because the May revise will have May 15th, right, is, is usually the May revise and usually gets leaked a couple of days before. And uh, that's what we have to be watching for because that is going to be where the negotiations will be. And I think that's where all of us have to make sure that it's boots on the ground, um, advocating for the things that really matter for all of us. And so I think that maybe we'll make sure that we put it on the agenda so that as soon as the May revise happens, you're able to come back to us and uh, and share sort of what, the dream was and where we are, uh, so they can continue to support. Thank you. Mayor Jones. Thank you, Chair. And I appreciate uh, Second Vice Chair Hebner's comments about the funding versus um, uh, the mandates as far as housing goes. 
I share your concerns uh, about that very much. Um, so my question is specifically about number 30, the legislation regarding or relating to transportation operating agency coordination. So um, when I was first elected mayor back in 2018, and um, there was a discussion with North County cities uh, with uh, then CEO Hassan Akrata, he had brought up um, the discussion of whether we thought that MTS and NCTD should merge. And uh, the North County cities, we were all very, uh, very much opposed to that because we have our unique needs. You know, I talk about this a lot. Um, some of our needs are not really shared and listened to by other agencies or other cities uh, when we're talking about the needs of North County. We tend to be a little more rural, but not always, but I mean, we really generally have a, a pretty um, long commute when it comes to uh, work and, you know, just trying to uh, enjoy the county because we have such a beautiful county. So I just wanna make sure that we're not going to be spending time and effort on trying to merge those two agencies because I would be very much opposed to that. So I'm not quite sure what the, that actually means. So I would like some clarification if, if we could have that on that. Thank you for the question. Um, this refers to a bill that was recently introduced to study restructuring the agencies in the Bay Area in terms of consolidating for cost efficiencies. So by putting it in the monitor category, it's not something that we actively take a position on. It's just something to keep an eye on as we start to see these trends in the state. Okay, so um, just following up on that, then if, if it looks like that would be something that they might do not just in one region, but um, roll that out statewide. Could we get some advance notice on that? Because I, I think that all of my colleagues in North County um, would probably want to weigh in on that. I, I think, you know, we, we really need that, um, that regional um, uh, voice uh, at NCTD, and I, I wouldn't be in favor of that. So if we could make sure we have an update on that, that would be great. Yes, yeah, certainly. And in fact, by adding it to the monitor column, this will ensure that staff devote time to monitoring any shifting changes like that. Great. Thank you very much, Anna. You're welcome. And Thank you, Chair. If I may, just to um, follow up on that. So just so everyone here understands our process. So you see where we have support and monitor. When we bring back these legislative reports to you all here at the executive committee, we'd report back. There's a bill that's doing, or five bills that are related to what was in your legislative program on 30. And here's what they each mean. We will also make recommendations from time to time that we think this is something that as a body you ought to support or oppose based on your legislative agenda. So that's the continuous Follow up and also, um, Chairwoman, as you were mentioning with the May revise, we again come back with any any implications here for the agency. So we continue to have these presentations, and that's why, so we can keep you in the loop. Thank you, Colleen. Um, and I have one more follow up on that. Um, so, if it if it does look like something, I mean, sometimes some of these bills go so quickly. Um, if we if we could definitely have something, you know, to North County, um, you know, board members, I think that would be very beneficial. If it looks like something's moving kind of fast and it doesn't have time to go to executive and then go out to the full board, I think um, it would just be good for us to have that heads up on it, and really would appreciate it. Thank you. All Thank right. you, Chair. You're welcome. Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor. Was that? Yeah, I'm the, sorry, Chairwoman, oh, I did not hear a second. I don't think I seconded it officially, but I shall now. Oh, because you said support. Thank sorry. You. I was reading her mind. Just kidding. Okay, motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, let's move on to the final item, the review of the draft agendas. Uh, Colleen, do you want to go ahead and uh, talk about the next items? Please? Yes, thank you. So we do not have any... Um, Proposed amendments to the February board agenda, but I am going to call on Robin Watner to give you an update on the May 8th agenda. March 8th Excuse agenda. Me. We're very excited. March to 8th. Thank you. <laughs> She's ready for May. Moving along quickly. 
Um, we're very excited to announce that we are planning your annual board retreat for March 8th, 2024. It will be a one-day workshop. Um, we're still finalizing all of the details, but thinking about 8.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. We are also confirming the location. As soon as we have that information, we will share it with all of the board members. I wanted to say thank you to those who filled out the survey at your last board meeting. I think it was pretty clear from those responses that there's a lot of desire to continue to build on the work that you did at your last board retreat around consensus building identifying opportunities to work together as a team in support of the region. So we'll be working with the chairwoman to start to flesh out the program for March 8th with the focus on really looking forward how we can work together um, and focus on the benefits to the region through all of the projects that we continue to deliver. All right. Um, are there any public comments on this item? Thank you. I have five public commenters on this item, two in person and three virtual. Truth, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by Michael Brando. All right, let's flush it all out. How about that? Item one, public comments should always be a minimum of two minutes everywhere. And no one should have to wait until after a closed session to speak. Item seven about the San Ysidro Mobility Hub should not be thrown into consent. It should be a discussion item, especially because Sandag was once trying to sell a central mobility hub. And since Hassan's not soon enough departure, the plan changed to where everything's inequitably focused toward our southern border. And certainly buses are going to be part of that hub, right? So we had a bus only lane on Oakland Boulevard. And at the MTS meeting yesterday, they said, since that decision, quote, the accident rate has increased, end quote. Just a fun fact. Item 8, it says the CEO delegated actions will be reported by Andre and Beth. I'm curious why it wouldn't be Colleen's name on the report. Item 10, I'm looking forward to this to the discussion of the anti-people monstrosity that seems to already be a predetermined trillion-dollar shoe-in choice for some corruptors at Sandag. Overall, I like that the agenda is rather short, like all meetings should be. And please continue to keep the consent calendar like a grocery store express line. Ten items or less, because anything more than that is just too tiring. Now, you guys don't want to hear me speak for a full minute, even though I'm going to take it all up, because it could be offensive. Your time expired. Michael Brando, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by the final three commenters, Paul the Bold, phone number 813, and the original draw. Please go ahead. Number six talks about the Regional Transportation Congestion Improvement Program and raising a fee, raising a fee. This whole theme about raising a fee, taxing, weakening people, this is all about weakening people, 100%. And in relationship to this, the 122-24 rain was not an act of God, as it was implied. It's tied into this whole agenda of weakening people to get them into the smart cities. Therefore, this whole thing, Lisa, don't look at uh, Sean. Just listen to what I'm saying. Get the book Behind the Green Mask by Rosa Corey, Lisa. You're giggling with Nora. This is why we need a video camera on all three of you, all four of you. When public speakers or speakers are talking, you're mocking them. We don't appreciate it. Our next commenter, the Paul the Bold, will be followed by phone number 813. Paul the Bold, please go ahead. Your self, there you go. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay, great. Um, I think we deserve more than just a verbal update on these draft board agendas. I agree with Mayor Jones that NCTD and the wishes of individual cities should be respected. And yes, Sean, it will take people a long time to rebuild thanks to you, the city, the county, and Sandag's spotty maintenance. Please do this work before the entire city, if not county, is unlivable. And by the way, no one will probably want to visit it either. Hope the board retreat will also allow public comment. Um, now, let's see. Goal number seven, instead of funding to promote zero fare public transit, I suggest reduced fare. Let's not shut off a revenue source totally, especially when 
Your time expired. Our next commenter, phone number 813, will be followed by a final commenter, the original draw. Phone number 813, please go ahead. You're self-muted. Yeah. Hmm. Just to follow up, just to follow up with everybody else's comments, it's very unfortunate. This is all purposeful. Um, it's obvious. It's very obvious. But you all move incrementally, and it really works that nobody knows who the F any of you guys are. Honestly, it's very the, the very few percentage of the county knows what's going on, knows how to get help. Um, a lot of these people that were affected by the rains have no idea how to get a hold. So in the future, like the near future, we will have more homeless. We will have more people begging for help and you guys will be nowhere, nowhere. But, you know, then again, they think like you, it's an act of God. It wasn't an act of God. It was all purposeful. You got to be like an ostrich with your head in the ground to not recognize what's happening to our skies. And it's sad because you guys are the supposed leaders of our communities. It's, it's disgusting. Your time expired. Our final commenter, the original draw, please go ahead. Because the plan is working entirely by design. They're really good at destroying stuff. So kudos for you guys, right? Satan is so proud. That's why this is an act of Satan, not God. You had the wrong God. Um, it's your guys's God, the one you worship and, um, you know, sacrifice babies to. Um, yeah, but everything that you guys are doing is, is all by design to destroy everything. And that's why, you know, you'll be like, let's ride public transit for free and then charge people more to drive for congestion. That's actually going to make it go away. And if we took, take away lanes and, you know, we make roundabouts and take out spots for parking, that's really, really going to reduce GHGs. You guys are so full of it. All you're doing is destroying things and people are begging and pleading for help. And you sit up there and you're like, we're going to go on a retreat and have a one day workshop. And it's going to be so much fun. And yeah, although while those people just suffer, don't worry about it because they need to suffer, right? That's what our job is to make sure that they're suffering every day. Your time expired. That concludes the public comments on this item. Any additional discussions, Ms. Brown? Thank you, Chair. Um, on uh, the draft agenda. Hello. For... Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. That wasn't me. I don't know. No, no, no. Problem. We know. We, we see you. that. Um, okay. On the uh, February uh, 23rd agenda, I just had a question about number 10, airport transit connection. My only question is, um, is that also inclusive of the central mobility hub or is that going to be included in the discussion? Yes. Okay, perfect. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. All right. Is that a motion? Yes, it's a move. I, I was just going to say, I'll move <laughs> approval. All let's, right. Is there a second? Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. With that, uh, we're going to go ahead and take any continuing non agenda public comments at this time. I had three continued non-agenda public comments. Phone number 813, Blair B. and the original draw. If you're still present and would like to speak, raise your hand at this time. Blair B., please go ahead. Hi, Blair Beekman. Hi, I'm first. Uh, I'm in Maui, Hawaii again. And uh, boy, uh, on the south side of the west side of the island, uh, they just had a huge storm come up from Kona. From Kona all the sand from all the beaches has been washed away and it's now deposited in what was once the coral reefs where all the fish were man they are having real problems in 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 hawaii in maui hawaii right now so uh i'm, I'm interested in uh what we have to do about our disaster uh, uh concepts funding issues good luck how you can address those things in san jose i mean in san diego like what i said um earlier it's important to, uh for me to consider that how we think of uh, future funding is about accountability. And we have to be accountable how we ask and talk about it. And that uh, we have to can really consider not harming ourselves in the future of, of community planning. And it's a community effort. We can do it without harming ourselves. And that's important lessons to learn. Thanks. Our next comment to the original draw, please go ahead. 
I was just wondering how much you guys paid to have all these people come out to the storm victims and ask them to buy their property, right? Or did you call them before and were you like, hey, there's a bunch of victims here that just lost everything? Go and offer them just like minimal amounts of money. And you know what? They could probably even rent from you. How cool would that be? You'd just be like, I'll buy your house. And then you know what? If you need a place to stay, you can just come live with me. Right. I mean, because it's like we got to take advantage of everybody's, you know, just like things that, that are a disaster when it destroys their life. It's like you really got to take advantage of these moments. Um, and it's funny because it's like, you know, it's smart too to like put have somebody not be able to stay in a hotel because it's not as expensive as the one you want to put them in. Right. Because then we can charge the people a bunch of money for all of this disaster relief. It's so lucrative. Oh my gosh. And good thing we're not acknowledging the, um, you know, weather modification because <laughs> this is some expensive rain that we just went through. We got to take advantage of it. Right. I mean, oh my gosh, no wonder people were out on the streets on their surfboards. That is so cool. Expensive rain is great. Your time expired. That concludes the continued non-agenda public comments. That concludes this meeting and uh, we will start the next meeting at 10.10. 10.